Hey guys, it's Vanessa V. Uh, welcome to my channel and thank you so, so much for tuning in today. Uh, today's segment is a little bit different as you can probably tell. Uh, we're in our kitchen right now. We're about to head out to go get Atlas. For those of you who don't know, uh, Atlas is one of our dogs. He's a Great Dane. And the other night, July 3rd, he ended up having a life or death uh, emergency here at the house. And so Nick and I had to rush him to the hospital. He ended up having uh, emergency surgery to literally save his life. And we are about to go get him. And we are so thankful that not only did he make it, but he's actually coming home earlier than expected. So we're gonna go get him. Uh, we're gonna bring you along. And along the way, we're gonna discuss what it was, uh, the decisions that we had to make, what happened, uh, and also what we feel is the number one thing that we did to prolong his life before we got to the actual hospital. Uh, so if, if you guys, you know, if you have a dog, that's highly susceptible to what Atlas had, or you're considering getting a dog uh, who is, or maybe you dog sit and puppy sit for your friends and uh, you wanna know more, hopefully this video can help you get more educated from our experience. Uh, and also, you know, if you are considering getting a dog that is highly susceptible to this, this can help you understand if this is something that truly is something that you want to do. Um, so, uh, as you know, my brain is so hazy. Y'all, if you have been through a situation like this, I'm sure you can definitely understand and empathize with that. We've been in a haze, so uh, please forgive me and thank you for understanding if my thoughts seem to kind of like go everywhere. But anyway, uh, where was I? Oh, that's right. Uh, this channel, this channel is about, you know, uh, discovering and thriving and conquering life and all the things that life throws at us. And I always try and pull from my own experiences. That way uh, I can give you a firsthand account of how I dealt with it and all that stuff. Uh, so it's really about sharing and growing together. And I'm really hoping that this video helps us all do that. I had planned on doing pet related videos, this was definitely not the first video or any video that I had planned on making ever, uh, but it is and here we are. So without further ado, we're super excited. Let's go and I will meet you in the car. All right guys, so here we are. We're on our way to go get Atlas. We're about five or 10 minutes out. So I just thought I would take a little bit of time to let you guys know what it was and what happened. So uh, basically it was what's called bloat. Now there are uh, two versions of bloat. Basically the first version is where a lot of gases fill the stomach and uh, that's an emergency. Um, it's not as serious as far as I know as the torsion that can also occur with bloat and that's what Atlas ended up having so that's called GDV now I I'm not an expert in bloat so I did bring it up on my phone just to tell you guys what GDV is gastric dilatation vulvalis uh, but that's basically when the stomach twists. Uh, I'm not gonna get into it because we don't have a lot of time, but I am linking links below to information about this, how it can happen and all that stuff. Um, basically, it's very controversial as to what causes it and also how to prevent it and in a lot of our research before we adopted Atlas we did do a lot of research and we based on our preventative actions on the research that we did the the books uh, the online sources the adoption agency that we went through as well as what our personal vet told us so all of those things combined we chose to do uh, these top three things. So we chose to have an elevated food bowl, which again is controversial, uh, but we were given an elevated food and water stand by the adoption agency and our vet also said that it was a good idea. Uh, we don't exercise him an hour before or after eating. Uh, what else? I don't remember, do you remember? <laughs> 
I can't think right now. By the way, thinking during times like this, not gonna happen, so sorry about that. But anyway, again, you can look below for more information. Oh, some of the key symptoms. So symptoms of bloat can be uh, panting, trying to vomit and not being able to vomit, um, uh, pacing back and forth, and the visual signs of gas pockets in the body. You can actually see, especially when the stomach is twisted, as far as I know, uh, you can see the gas pockets. And that is something that we did notice in Atlas, and that was the final, holy this is bloat, like we have got to go. Uh, I think 40% of dogs can get this, 50% of Great Danes pass away. Uh, you have less than an hour, literally, um, or up to a few hours, it really depends. The twisting is the main problem because air builds up in the stomach and it cuts off blood circulation. Um, and and it can also cause the stomach to rot where it's twisted apparently. And um, all of these things can cause shock and death in your dog. So it's extremely important that you get them to the vet immediately. Now, there are a lot of different breeds that tend to have this um, occur much more frequently. I believe Great Danes are the number one breed where it's just sort of common. So a lot of times vets or owners will have um, the stomach um, have surgery on the stomach to help prevent that uh, when they get neutered as puppies. I don't believe Atlas had that. And one of the problems is with these deep chested dogs like Great Danes and other breeds, the older they get, I believe the stomach stretches or the ligaments inside stretch and the stomach is much more able to flip on itself. Uh, and also they're not sure if it's if it flips first and then the gas expands or if the gas expands and then causes the stomach to twist. I, I heard that there's some controversy about that as well. Uh, so, okay, now let's talk about uh, what happened that night. Um, so basically, we fed Atlas at 6.30. About eight o'clock, we let him outside. Uh, to go to the bathroom. He bounded around a little bit, um, but we checked our clocks on our phones and it would have definitely been over an hour. But again, it was very minimal sort of trotting, bounding um, out to the lawn and then back to the back door. So we felt okay. About 8.30, he wanted to go outside again, so we let him out. Uh, we let them back in about 8.45, and within minutes, he wanted to go out again. And uh, we were like, no, 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 like, that's not really typical of him to do, which should have been a red flag. Uh, but we were like, you know, try, try and wait, boy. But uh, he went into the kitchen and he threw up, and that was another red flag. Uh, but again, it didn't connect to us. We had swapped over his food recently, so we thought that might be the issue. I won't go into detail about that, but you know, dogs can sometimes have an issue uh, when you switch their food, even if it's over time. Anyway, so we let him outside. I clean up the vomit. It takes about 10 minutes, uh, and I, I, well, a little under 10 minutes, and I go outside and I see what's up. Now at that point it's dark outside and Atlas is black. So we um, we have floodlights, but in the area of the yard that he was in was not uh, well lit. So to see the gas in him was really difficult. But he was trying to throw up and he um, had all this vomit and drool and all that icky stuff in his mouth and I I, uh, I saw him get into this really funky body position and when I looked closer and the light hit his body I noticed that uh, there were now air pockets and when we let him outside his body looked fine um, but there were definitely air pockets at that point and I I said oh my God, I, I think this is bloat. And I asked Nick and Nick looked over, my husband, and he was like, yeah, he's definitely bloating. And immediately after that, it was an absolute madhouse, a madhouse. Uh, I think I was like, we have got to go. And we both ran. Uh, we ran inside, we gathered everything that we needed, we scrambled around, I, I grabbed a blanket, my shoes, which I almost did not grab. We forgot masks, which ended up not being that great. Uh, but anyway, so while Nick is getting the car, I'm on the phone with the vet 
previous to that, I had Googled very quickly if there was a closer ER to our house. I didn't think so, and I was correct. So we called the uh, ER vet that we already had been to previously with our other two dogs. Um, those were not like serious uh, issues, but we knew where it was. We knew it was about 15 minutes away. Uh, we didn't know how to load him into the car though. So I let them know we were coming. I let them know how far away we were. And uh, they, um, oh, and then they were like, we'll get him into the car. And I said, well, how do I do that? I don't know how. So they told us, you know, don't touch his stomach, just lift him in. And luckily he was able to put his paws on the back part of the car. So all Nick had to do was lift his rear and in he went and off we went. I turned on the hazard lights, we get on the highway, um, we are obviously speeding, we definitely ran through very safely, but we, we ran through some red lights for sure. Uh, we had to drive on the shoulder at one point. <laughs> uh, and then of course, you know, there's an accident, major accident where everything goes down to one lane. Uh, but th at that point I was just saying, you know, he is not gonna die in this car. He is not gonna die in this car. We are gonna get there fast, blah, 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 blah. Just speaking as many positive affirmations as possible. Uh, and people definitely got over for us and we were able to get in and, um, and we ended up getting the vet within 20 to 25 minutes of first seeing the signs. Anyway, we get there, they're already outside waiting for us. I called them on the way there. Uh, they had a gurney and everything. And because I didn't have a mask, <laughs> my sweater was like up over my face like a cartoon villain. When I got out of the car, I wasn't even thinking about a mask. And Nick was like, honey, your mask, get your mask. And I was like, oh my gosh, I don't have one. And the ones that we had previously stored in the car were in the wash. So anyway, I have my sweater over my face. We're trying to social distance. Uh, but because I didn't have my mask, it meant that we had to sit outside on the sidewalk the whole time for hours uh, because they wouldn't let you in without a mask and they would not give me a mask. So uh, that made it a little worse, but whatever, like I barely even noticed. So uh, lots of phone calls between us and the surgeon. Uh, the surgeon switched. Uh, so the woman that had his case in the beginning ended up swapping over to another one. And uh, it was basically, you know, get, tell us his history. And, you know, he's adopted. We don't necessarily know all of his history. Um, they gave us the options. They let us know that they had put the tube down. I think they had stuck the needle in his chest also. Both of those things uh, to relieve pressure and get, get some gas out, which I believe did help. Uh, they did the x-rays. They really kept us... Uh, informed the entire time and uh, we had to make life or death decisions sitting on a sidewalk you know it, 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 without having thought of it and um, ahead of time so we knew that we wanted him to have the surgery we knew that he was healthy so he needed to have the surgery he wasn't ready to go and we were very clear with them on that so basically in a nutshell that's what happened and we were able to stay calm and positive throughout the experience which i think really made a huge difference that's about it we're almost there if you guys have questions please feel free to comment below in uh the comments below uh, or private message me. Uh, I'm more than willing to answer questions, give you more info. And again, I don't know if I've forgotten something or not, but uh, hopefully I, I helped give you guys an, uh, an idea of um, the situation and what happened. Uh, and so stick around. We're going to pick him up in a few minutes and then uh, I'll give you guys an update about how he's doing after that. So thank you so much again for being along with this and uh, we'll see you in a little bit. So we just picked up Atlas a few minutes ago at the vet, and he's a little down. Um, he's not quite his usual self, but um, that's kind of to be expected. So he was a little happy when he saw us, and um, 
he's just chilling out. So we're gonna turn on the spa station for him so he can have some nice calming music, so. Hey guys, so it's a few days later and uh, we're just chilling out with Atlas right now. Uh, we've basically just been giving him time uh, with us, but also on his own. So we have the bed set up in the living room, which is a pretty central spot for us. Uh, and uh, we've just been letting him go at his own pace. He's eating, he's drinking, and each day we're seeing more and more and more of his personality show. So that's awesome. Uh, they did send him home with what's called a fentanyl patch on him. Uh, it's right here if you can see it. Yeah, boy. Uh, we are actually going to take that off once we're done here because uh, it's starting to cause the skin to get a little bit red. And I did call the vet a short time ago and they said that we could take it off a day early. So we're going to be doing that. Uh, he's also on what's called, I think, Suflexin, which is an antibiotic. So it's in pill form. So we just shove that in some cheese and he gobbles it right up. Oh, the receipt. Yeah. Let's look at the money we spent. <laughs> Um, okay, so this is the first page, and I'll hopefully it'll be in focus. You can always pause it if you need to. And here's the second page. So we had to pay $5,000 down outside at midnight on the sidewalk on July 4th. Um, we had to pay it before they did the surgery, actually. Um, and then the rest of the 7000 it came to 7000 was when we picked him up. But basically, you can just see that it's a bunch of smaller charges that just really add up. Uh, I will say, yeah, it's a huge amount of money. Um, but we were aware that it was a possibility before we adopted him. And because we did our research, we knew that going in, and so we were prepared to do that. Uh, we would never have adopted him if that wasn't something that we thought we could do. So it's just something to keep in mind when you do adopt animals that are high risk for things like this, or any animal, that there are financial decisions that you may have to make at some point, um, and being okay with that you know, because they're in our care. And, uh, and I'm just so thankful that we were able to do that. Oh, also, and they tacked his stomach. So in the surgery, they, I th well, I think it's called tacking, but I believe they staple the stomach to the rib cage so it can't twist. Um, it's supposed to, even though they can bloat in the future, it's supposed to prevent the stomach from actually twisting. Uh, a couple key things really quick before we go that we learned. Research. Got to do your research ahead of time. Pay attention to your animal and how they act and how they look so you can pick up on signs. Um, of course, you know, that seems kind of normal, but just underscoring that for all of us out there, I'm glad that we, uh, we do that because we were able to pick up on it much faster. Uh, acting quickly. Obviously, you know, time is of the essence, especially in emergency situations like this. And so acting quickly definitely helped save his life. And the last thing is believing positively. So one thing I've learned from trying to heal with my post-traumatic stress disorder is learning how to put myself in a positive mindset despite the crap going on around me. And this was definitely one of those moments that all of that work and mastering prepared me for and I was able to do it. It still took a lot of work. It was still really scary to do also because the situation seemed so real to sort of work yourself out of it and get into a place of um, confidence and control and a uh, positive mindset can be scary. Uh, but a couple things that it does is one, it helps you think clearer. So, you know, we talk a lot about the brain on this channel um, and triggering it into more positive mindsets. And that's exactly what this situation needed because it helped me think clearer uh, and it helped me feel better. And those two things are extremely important. I will say he also did an amazing job. He survived this situation, especially as a geriatric dog. Um, he ended up coming home earlier than he uh, had to. He did amazing. So positive believing 
could have had an impact on that, I will say. I don't know, but hey, you never know. The number one thing that I will say saved his life until we got to the vet was a product that I'm not being paid to endorse, but uh, I found it on my own before we adopted him. We've had it on hand, haven't needed to use it, but uh, I would definitely recommend it. I'm not an expert on bloat, but I'm an expert in my own situation, and I would definitely say that this worked for us. It is called Bloat Buster, and I'm gonna link it below. That way you can uh, go buy some if that's something that you decide to do. Basically, it's a gas X for uh, dogs, and it helps break down the gas. Um, it comes with a syringe. Uh, a couple notes on that. When I administered it to him, uh, it was about this full, and I had to pry his mouth open because it, uh, well, it was shut, but <laughs> uh, it was really hard for me to push it in because when I pried his mouth open, it was covered in vomit and drool. And because of that, um, I, it was so slippery, I could not get my fingers on it. And so what I ended up having to do was do that strop, drop, and roll stress hack that we've talked about. I'll link that below because uh, that definitely helped me in this situation. Um, and I was able to get my fingers on it and shove it down his throat, ran back inside, then ran back outside, got him in the car, and off we went. Uh, the reason I think this helped was because when we were in the car, I had... I was looking at him uh, and he was panting, trying to vomit, panicking. I turned around to call the vet to let them know that we were on our way and all that stuff. And when I turned back around, within half a minute, a minute, his head was down on his paws and he was completely still. And I thought he was dead. Literally, I thought he was dead. So I just shook his head and screamed his name and he perked up. He was actually more alert than when we got into the car. He was no longer showing visible signs of distress. He seemed more comfortable. Uh, he still had the bloat uh, visually, but he just seemed more comfortable. And he was able to walk into the hospital instead of the gurney that they had uh, waiting for us outside. So just from my own experience, you know, I'm not an expert on bloat, but I'm an expert in my own situation and I would definitely recommend this and we're gonna be buying more. Okay, so thank you for listening. I really hope that everything that I said helped you guys and helped prepare you more. Uh, if you found anything in this video enlightening, feel free to like this uh, video. If not, it's cool. Uh, subscribe to this channel. I would love to um, share more videos with you in the future. Uh, oh, and uh, follow us on social media. Links are below and that's it. So have a great day guys. Happy tales and I will see you next time.